Okay, well, today we are going to um, start a new venture in our concurrent paradigm, concurrency paradigm. What we saw up until now was we defined the critical section problem. We saw the, the uh, what are the three things that a solution to the critical section problem has to satisfy. We saw the concept of a, what? What was the first one? Mutual exclusion, must have mutual exclusion, must be what free? Deadlock free and must be starvation free. And furthermore, we were able to do all of that with uh, spin locks. We were able to get, you know, and we saw Decker. And by the way, Decker's solution is not the only software solution. Peterson's is another one that's, that's uh, common. And there are others. There's, there's more than one way to do it. But the whole thing, but the whole thing is predicated on the fact that whether they are running concurrently on two cores, literally at the same time, and only, um, you know, and the hardware guarantees that when you update a shared variable, one goes first, whether it's like that or whether they are in a multi-programming environment where they're actually being switched in and out with just one core, with one processor. Uh, either way, it, that solves the problem. But it's kind of like based on, spin lo on, on spinning and awaiting until something happens, so with a loop, and, until, you, until it times out at which point progress can be made. Mm -hmm. uh, with Decker's algorithm, if you're using like, multiple processes instead of two, like you're using Processors? Yeah. Or processes? Is. Uh, like if there's P and Q and R and S and T and Y. Yeah. Um, instead of having like a one P, do you have to have, if one P, or one, one Q. Or one. Yeah, that's that's a good yeah that's a good question, and it's not immediately obvious. And the answer is yes. It's not immediately obvious how to generalize that, generalize it to more than one process. Okay, so it is but four. yes. Okay, and then it turns for how. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the thing is, uh, yeah, and, and and by the way, that's it's a very, it's a very difficult one to generalize for Decker's is. It's a, very, a difficult one to generalize for multiple processes. And what we're going to see is that these solutions, those solutions are all, are all cumbersome and they, they show what the problem is and they show how to solve it entirely in software. But now what we're going to do today is we're going to learn about semaphores. Now what, so what's the idea of a semaphore? Or why do we have a semaphore? The purpose is to prevent that inefficient spin lock of the await statement. Okay. So what happens is, it's kind of interesting. What happens is the process itself can put itself in a queue. So instead of waiting for the operating system to put it in a queue, it can put itself in the queue. Do you see the idea? Because what, what, how, what, what does a spin lock do? A spin lock just keeps spinning until what happens? Until it's interrupted okay, by the operating system. But now what we're going to say is, well, instead of, instead of spinning it, why don't, why don't we have a mechanism whereby if something knows that it has to wait for something to happen, it says, oh, it relinquishes, it relinquishes control of the CPU and it puts itself into a state waiting for something and then it won't, you won't be spinning and it'll be much more efficient. Is everybody with me on that? That's the idea. Now look, you guys, here's how it works physically in the operating system. Do you remember this figure? This is the figure of, remember when we said, um, we said that the way, a, the li during the lifetime of a single process, first, the, in order to start a process running, the system has to create the process, and what is it, what is it, tell me, what is a process? Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, what during it? It's a program during execution. What is it? They'll say it all together. What's a process? It's a program during execution. Yeah. And in order to have a program during execution, what do you have to keep track of? If it's ever going to get suspended and then started up and suspended, what do you have? You have to have the state. And what is the state? It's the collection of all the what? Variables. And and their values and yes and, and a pointer to the next instruction to be executed exactly okay and those are all collected into a what 
a process control block, and it's a queue of process control blocks that the operating system maintains. Are you with me? So there's a set, so you, you imagine, imagine at this point in the, at the ready, there is a ready queue. Are you with me? There is a ready queue. And can you imagine this waiting for I.O.? There is a waiting for I.O. what? Q. Q. And is there a running queue? Yes or no? Is there a queue at this state? Yes or no? No, because it's not, there's no queue here. This, when the process is here, it's in control of the CPU and it's executing those CPU statements, those processor statements. Are you with me? So there's no, but there is a queue waiting for I.O. and there is a queue here. And is there a queue at f finish? No, because the process is dead. So does everybody visualize there's a queue here and a queue here? Now, and how do you get from one to the other? You time out. If you're running, you time out and, you, and that will be put on this queue. Okay? And then how do you get from, from running to, the, to this queue? Well, you request an I.O. and then you, you go to the waiting for I.O. queue. Is everybody clear on that, on, on what that looks like? So here's what we're going to do. Here's how semaphores work. You add a fourth state for a process. So we already had ready in the ready queue. We had the state running in the CPU. And we, have the queue, we had the waiting for I.O. and the I.O. wait queue. Now what we're going to have is we're going to have a special queue just for the semaphore. So every semaphore has a queue. Are you with me? That's important to, uh, to remember. And that semaphore queue, you know, whenever, whenever the process puts itself, suspends itself, so that another concurrent process can take over, it puts itself in the blocked on semaphore queue. Now, so here's the picture. Do you see what we've done here? Is we have added an extra queue here. So when we're running, not only can we time out and go back to the ready queue, not only can we request I.O. and go to the waiting for I.O. queue, we can also execute a what? A wait statement. And when, we ex when the process executes the wait statement, it puts it, 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 the system says, oh, you want to wait? Okay, we're going to put you on the waiting for S queue. S is the semaphore. It's, it's not, it's, no, it's not like the delay. The delay keeps it in the running queue and it keeps spinning in the running, sorry, not the running, I said running queue. It, it's in the running state and it just keeps spinning. It delays until it eventually times out. But whenever it executes wait, it, it goes right away. It, it's interrupted right away, and the operating system is, oh, you want to wait? Okay, I'm going to put you in the waiting for S queue. S is the semaphore. All right? So there's a queue. Every semaphore has a queue, a waiting for S queue. And what you can do is you can wait S, and that'll put you in here, and, and you can signal S. And then, and then if, if someone else does a signal, at, now here, if you are waiting for S, now this is kind of an important concept. If you are waiting for S, can you execute signal S? No, because you're not running. So some other process that's running has to execute what? Signal, signal S. At which point, that process is saying, oh, you can go back to the ready queue. If there are multiple in that waiting queue, does it only send one back to the ready queue? Yes, it only sends one, yes. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the detail. We're going to look at those details right now. So here's a picture. Here's the... Here's the a picture of the same thing that from our author, slide 6.1, but, and he, he only shows the ready and the running and this blocked, he calls it the blocked state or the blocked queue, and then back to this ready. But you see, and then he's, he, he, he hasn't put in the waiting for I.O. and the, yeah? But otherwise, this is, this is the same picture as this one here. Is everybody good? And then the one for Java is that one that we looked at before. We're going to go back and revisit that. For Java. Remember the from Sestoft? All right, so here's what a semaphore is. A semaphore is a data structure. Let's say, well, you can think of it as a type, right? And a semaphore has two fields. One is an integer and one is a queue. And we call the integer 
if s is the semaphore, we call the integer s dot v for the value of the semaphore, and we call the q s dot l. You can think of l as a list of processes. Are you with me? And that's the, so the q is s, the integer value is s dot v, and the q is s dot l. And furthermore, what if you, if you are programming in a system where the library provides you with a semaphore, the semif here's what the semaphores do. First of all, they are atomic. And here's what you can do with a semaphore. You can initialize a semaphore. Now here on this initialization, it says semaphore s gets now k0. So k is the integer this what is the zero with a slash through it? It's like a, the empty set. It's kind of like the empty set. So, it's, uh, so it initializes the Q to be empty and, 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 and it initializes the integer to be whatever K is. Are you with me? So that, there's that initialization. And then there's wait and signal. Now here's wait. Now look you guys, this looks, this is what wait S does. Now it does all of this stuff but do you, you have to understand that it guarantees that all of this stuff is atomic. Are you with me? So there's no, in, no there is, it guarantees that there's no interleaving. So if one process wants to do a wait and another process wants to do a wait, whoever starts his wait first, it's going to complete all the way through. There's no interleaving of the waits. And also there's no interleaving of the signals. It has to guarantee that. Yes, the whole weight is atomic. Yes, this whole, yes, good point. The whole if else is atomic. Why does it do so much at once? <laughs> well, at a lower level of abstraction, there might be a little spin lock hidden away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or there might be some sort of hardware support. You know, there might be a way to lock out something in the hardware to do it efficiently. You see what I mean? Say, oh, we're going to start this thing. Boop. Yeah, that was a good question. Just because it's abstracted away doesn't mean it's gone. It's just under the hood. <laughs> so, but, but you see what I mean? How, how that, yeah, that was a good question. So now, now, now let's take a look at what S, at what weight S does. Now, if the value, so what does the if statement say? If S dot V, if the value of the integer is what? Yeah, in other words, positive, greater than zero. If the integer is positive, the only thing it does is what? Subtract. Subtracts one from it. That's all it does. So it looks at the integer. If the integer is positive, it just subtracts one and just goes on. So it doesn't really even wait. Are you with me? So it's possible to execute wait and not to be blocked. But on the other hand, else what? If it's zero or negative, else what, what does it do? Now, what, is, what does it do? S dot L. So what is S dot L? That's the what? That's the Q or the, or the set. Actually, he, he treats it as a set. He uses set notation here. So S dot L gets what? S dot L, and what does this mean? Union P. So if S dot L is a set of processes, it puts P in that it puts the process P in there. Are you with me? It puts it in there. And then what does it do? P dot state gets blocked. So what does that mean? If we go back to this transition here, it means it goes from the running to the waiting for S. That's what that means. So now it's in the, it's in the queue. Are you with me on that? That's the meaning. What is P dot state gets blocked? Sorry. Okay, yeah, let's... Okay. Okay. So, ask your question again. Oh, yeah. So, so p. Oh, okay. So, when it says, when it says p dot state gets blocked, that means that it gets put in the in the waiting for semaphore queue. It blocks it. That's what blocked means. It's blocked means it's in the queue for the semaphore. But that only happens if the integer is uh, is not positive. Is everybody with me? And here's, the, but, but all that's atomic. You can't, there's no interleaving. When it does SV, it's SV minus one. It's not like temp, you can, you know, load store, all that load store stuff. That's, you don't have to worry about that. It's all atomic. <coughs> so now, and here's what signal does. If 
the integer is what? Oh, sorry, not the integer. Ooh, ooh bad, bad mistake. If the what? Q, if, if the blocked Q is what? If the blocked Q is empty, then what does it do? There's nothing for it to do, right? So if, if, the, if the Q is empty, then what does it do to the, to the integer value? It adds one to it. So if the Q is empty, it adds one to it. Else what does it do? Let Q be some process in the what? In the set of blocked processes. And do what? Take that Q, remove it from that set of blocked processes, and do what? Q.state gets ready. So what does that do? If we come back here, what does that do? That moves it from the waiting for S into the ready. Now, is everybody clear on the operation there? Are we good with that? Is the integer just which process is going to go next? No, okay. That's a good question. The end, what is the integer? The, is the integer is not, no, the answer is no. The integer is not necessarily which processor is going to go next. The integer is whatever the, pro, the integer is used for whatever the program want, programmer wants to use it for. So the programmer can use the integer however he or she wants to use it. You see what I mean? So that's up to the programmer to, to have the integer be whatever the integer wants. And in some, pro, in some problems, the integer can be represented as something, and in some programs, it can be represented as something else. But it's like a variable that, you, that the programmer has control over, can access, yeah? Roughly speaking, yeah, it, yeah. Roughly speaking, it, a weight makes it go down by one, and a signal makes it go up by one. But not always, because there might you you might do the else. If if you if you're in these else's, then it's then it doesn't go down by one or up by one. But it only waits once, right? And once it's waited, it's blocked. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's correct. It it when it when it does wait, it's not spinning. It's actually going into that queue. And some other and, and and relinquishing the CPU, some other. If the integer is positive, it doesn't get blocked. So Correct. Keep waiting then, or no? No, no. If it doesn't get, then they just keep executing. Oh, okay. Keep executing in the run state. You set it to negative when you want it to be set aside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You you program the semaphore. Yeah. I'll sh we'll show you how it's how to how to use the semaphore here in a minute. Okay. okay. Now. A binary semaphore, in a binary semaphore, the value of s dot v, the value of the, of the integer, is only allowed to be 0 or 1. So, and here's just some terminology. We won't, you know, our semaphore in, our semaphores, we're not going to distinguish between them. We'll just always assume that they are integer semaphores. Because really, a binary semaphore is just like an integer semaphore. It's just that you just program it so that it's only 0 or 1 is the only values that it can get. Okay, but, and this is also called a, a mutex. A binary semaphore is also called, it's a common name of a, of a, of a, a semaphore. It's called mutex. And this is short for mutual exclusion. So you see that a lot in concurrent code. You see, you see mutex this, mutex that. That's what it is. It's a binary semaphore. Now look, you guys. Here's the thing. All that stuff we did with Decker's algorithm, all that, wait, wait, if, while, boom, if, the turn, blah, 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 all that stuff, proving that it's correct, all that kind of stuff. Look, I sort of hate to tell you this <laughs> because, we, because we went through all that stuff in so much detail. But look, the critical section problem is trivial when you have semaphores. Watch this. Watch this. Here's the solution to the critical section with semaphores, with two processes. Look how easy it is. What is it, here, what, what, what happens up here? Binary semaphore S. Now, what, the integer is initialized to what? One, and the Q is initialized to the empty set. So there's nothing, are you with me? And look, what does P do? P has non-critical section, and what is the, what is the, the pre-protocol? Wait S. And then critical section, and then what's the post protocol? Signal S. Now you understand, this is guaranteed atomic. It's on one line here. It's guaranteed atomic. 
and what, because, see, before we couldn't guarantee that those loops were all atom or atomic, see, so we had to do all those spins and stuff. Okay. And, now, and Q is the same thing. Weight S, critical section, signal S. One semaphore. Right? Now, why does that work? Here. Let's, let's construct the first part of a state transition diagram. Let's, so here, what we're going to do is, we're going to a state transition diagram. We're going to, let's do, um, now, what is our initial, our initial, our initial, our what, what's, what's the initial? P, P1, Q1, right? Now, and then, uh, let me see, P1, Q1, and the semaphore is initialized to what? What's the semaphore initialized to? One and the empty. Okay, so now we're going to go around the room. So listen up. Okay, so here's the start. Okay, here's our start state. Are you with me? Now, let's suppose that P executes. Who wants to start? What's the next state? You want to start? Okay, okay, so it's going to be, what's it going to be? P2, what? Q1, and then one empty. Excellente. Okay. And what about if P goes again? Okay, so man, you're up. So if P goes again, what's going to happen? P3, Q1. P3, Q1, but now, and now what? What about what happened? What happened when we? What happened when you did P two? What happened? There's the definition. What happened? So what did it do? Now this you got the hard one. I mean you got the interesting one. So this is zero, and then what? And what about what's in the queue? Did anything get put in the queue? So what is so what's so what's in the, it's still empty. Is everybody is everybody clear on that? Now where is P? P is where? In the what? In the critical section. Now let's see if Q tries to get in. Now watch this. So what happens if Q here what okay, so uh, Shane, you're up. So what happens if Q tries to get into his critical section? What is it gonna execute? If Q execute, what is that? Yeah, well from this state. So what's the next state? P3, Q2. P3, Q2. And then what about the state of the semaphore? Uh, zero, empty set. zero empty set. Okay. Are we good? And what about if we try to do Q again? Uh, Adam, what happens if we, if we try to do Q again? What will happen? Yeah, now this is tricky, huh? What makes you two again? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I I tell you what, let's post it's gonna be it's gonna be P three, right? Right. We know that. We don't know that what about the what about the semaphore? Let's postpone that for a minute. What about the semaphore? What will it be? It will be zero, but now what? Yes, now P will be blocked. Now, does everybody see that? Sorry. Q will be blocked because Q executed. Now, does everybody see that? that, that does everybody see this like this, right? Are you with me? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, but now what? This says, this says, uh, Q, you know, what we're going to do is here, we're going to say Q, see here's the thing, this can't be, the next, the next statement to execute is Q3, right? Yeah. But it can't be picked because it's blocked. So let's put Q3, let's put it like prime. To say, say that at this point we can't pick it, right? Because it's blocked. So the only thing that can execute next is what? Is P. So Eva, so what happens if, if P executes, now what happens to this state? What, ha what happens here? Yes, so this is P4, and then, and what, and this, and still Q3 prime. 
and 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 what's what's here? What about the state? What about the state of the semaphore? Yes, because what? Because P three executed. What is P three? <coughs> That's just a critical section. That doesn't change the semaphore, right? So, so what? So what's the semaphore? State the semaphore. Zero, and Q is still in it. It's still blocked in it. Okay. Is everybody? Does everybody see how this works? Okay. And now, uh, the only thing that can happen now also is what? P, right? So, so now if P now if P executes, what 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 statement is P executing now? P4. Yeah, which is signal. So now, so now what? So now how does now, now you read what the signal is? So what does it do? So um, it's gonna implement Yeah. So so the next one after P four executes, the next one will be what? Will be P, so it'll be back to P1 because it's going by the start of the loop. Okay, and now what? Q3 prime. Well, actually, let's. What, what about the state of this? What about? One empty. Yeah, so this is going to be one and empty. And furthermore, what did it do? It put. It released, it released Q3. So now Q3 is available to be executed next. Oh, sorry. Oh. Because it's, if it's empty, then increment. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You are right. No, wait. Wait, it is zero. Oh, right. You're right. Oh, good point. <laughs> You're right. It is zero because now Q3 is so now so now when Q3 executes, where will where will it be? If Q yeah if Q so now if Q ex, so now Q can execute from this point right here. Oh, that was a good that was a my mistake. So now so now there's two. Uh, is it possible for P to execute from this state? It is possible for P. Let's investigate both. It is possible for P to execute. If Q executes, actually, Chloe, since you were insightful about that, so if Q executes, what's going to happen? Um, it'll be P1, Q4, and zero, and the empty set. And zero, and the empty set for the semaphore. And if P executes, what will it be? P2. P2. Q3. Q3. Zero and empty set. Oops. Now, do you see then? Do you see that if P goes all the way around and tries to get in its critical section, what will happen? I, we, I don't have time to do room to do the whole thing, but if if P and tries to get in its critical, what what will happen? If Q is still is if Q is still here, what will happen? If P, if I do P, 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 what will eventually happen? And before, before Q, it will get put, it'll get blocked. So do you see how that does mutual exclusion? So here it is. Okay. So here I've labeled this, I've labeled this states A, A B, C, D, E, F. States E and F have no transition on Q because Q is blocked Q3 prime means Q cannot execute. So does everybody see how that worked? And how that, that's an example, all right? So now look, you guys. <laughs> you know how we did the, the uh, abbreviated? Because, you know, this would have a whole lot of states, right? But didn't we say that we could use this abbreviated diagram? So let's consider, let's see, how to, let's see how to analyze these algorithms with semaphores. All right, so let's start with P1, Q1, 1, 0. Now watch this. P1, Q1, 1, and the empty. All right? And now, tell me, 
What happens if you do a P? Okay, uh, so Sam, what do you think? If we do a P, then what's the, what state are we in? And this is, you understand what we did, how we did the abbreviated? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's it going to be? P2. P2. Q1. Q1, good. Yes, zero, empty. All right. And uh, man, what happens if we do a Q, if Q executes from here? If Q executes from here, we go to what? Yeah, but it's P2, Q2 what? Prime and what? What's the state of the semaphore? Now look at the definition there of what happens if it's empty. Oh, we left out the camera in again. <laughs> Does it? What, what statement got executed with Q? A wait or a signal? Wait. It was wait. So look at the wait. And what does the wait say? If if s dot v is greater than, is s dot v greater than zero? No. So what did it do? But yeah, I put yeah. Only this time it's q is the one that's executing it, right? So it puts what? Q. Q is the one that's executing the wait, so it puts Q in the set. And is, are you with me? Yes. So what is so what is the state of the semaphore? What's the integer? Zero. It's still zero. So zero and Q is there. So is everybody with me on this? Okay. So Shane, now what would happen if we did Q from the start state? What would happen? Obviously by symmetry. What would this be? P1, Q2, 0, the empty set for the Q. All right. And uh, now, cameraman, what about, what if, what, if we are, uh, what if we are in this set and Q, sorry, Q already did. What if we're in this set and P executes? So what, tell me what this would be. If P executes, what would this be? Uh, if we're in this state and Q executes, oh my goodness, come on. Say it again? Yeah, the Q, oh sorry, uh, I said it wrong again. If Q, executes, it take, if Q executes, it takes us to this state. If P executes from here, where does it take us? What is the state? If P executes here, where does it take us? What is, what is the statement? What, is, what, what statement is executing? So P is executing signal. So look at the definition of signal. So what's it do? Is this zero? Yeah. Look, do you see, do you see, do you see what, what it's, it's, it's executing this? Is it not? Are you with me on that? Look, if we're in this state and Q executes, then this is the, it, it executes, if it executes signal S, and signal S is if S dot L equals zero. And S dot L is zero, there it is. So that takes us back to what? And it doesn't change the, this. So it takes us back to what? P1. Q1. Are you with me? But P1, Q1. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> it does take us to P1, Q1. But what I'm saying, yeah. Because this is 0, it adds 1 to it. Yes. And, and that is this state. Yeah, uh, is everybody clear on that? 
Okay, so those P here and Q here. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Man. You guys are nice and alert. And now what about if we're Eva? What about if we're in this state and, and now let me think. Q executes. And what for the for the Q? And one and the empty, which is this state. All right? So it's Q here. Okay, so now Adam, what about if we're in this state and P executes? Because we can't execute Q, right? Yeah. So if P executes from this, where do we go? Yeah. Zero, comma, empty. You are really, really close. It's P1. What did you say? Q2. Q2. Yeah. Are you with me? Because it's no longer blocked. And what state is that? What state is that? It's already up here. Yeah. It's this one. Are you with me on that? So this one comes to here on what? On P, right? Is everybody clear? Now, what about this one, uh, Ray? If we're on this one and um, P executes. Now, what is P executing? Wait. wait. So what is P executing? Oh, okay, so it's wait, so therefore... So we go to P2 prime Q2. Zero. Zero, and P is blocked. You see how it put itself on that blocked Q? And that's what happens if we do a P here. And now, what do you think, Chloe? To finish this out. <laughs> if we're here, we can't execute P, right? Because P is blocked. So the only thing we can do is Q. But if we do Q, what, where's that going to take us? So this is Q. So Q is executing. And so what is it? What, what, what statement is it? The it's the signal. Zero and the empty Q, yeah. and what will and be P2Q. which is what that one. That one. <laughs> so this is Q on this one. This one is P on this one. Q on this one. Is everybody? Is everybody? Are we good? Now did that, did everybody see how that worked? Okay, so here it is. I, I think it helps to think through that to see how what exactly uh, the semaphore does in detail. Yeah, are we good? So now, here's so now how do we so here's our here is our thing. Now how do we know that uh, how do we know that we have mutual exclusion by looking at this state? How do we know that we have mutual exclusion? If we didn't have mutual exclusion, then what to P two would be about to execute and Q two would be about to execute, and they could be chosen either they could. Are you with me? So, but do we have a P2Q2? Well, we have a P2Q2 prime, but that, that one's blocked. But we don't have a P2Q2. Are you with me? So, mutual exclusion, yes, we have no P2Q2. How about deadlock free? How do you show that it's, why, wh how, how do we know that it's deadlock free? It would be, if, what would, if, we had a, if we had one with deadlock, what would happen? It would, if we had one with deadlock, it would, Something we, we would come in here and we would have what? A P1 prime and a Q or a P something prime, you know. I guess it would be all the primes are always on twos, right? It would be a, a P2 prime and a Q2 prime. But we don't have that, yeah? So it is deadlock free, okay? And starvation free. Is it, how about starvation free? Is it starvation free? Well, now we have to use a little reasoning. If P executes, wait S. Actually, here's the next slide. So let's take let's let's take a look at 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 this next slide. So 
if P executes wait that's so I have a little picture of the with the red box around P so here it says here here's our reasoning if P executes wait s either the only way P can execute wait s is it is either a P is not blocked and which means if it's not blocked it can execute signal s so Q can pr proceed or B P is blocked in which case Q will proceed right so it's so so here it so here it is if so so this is the um, this is the P executes wait so the only way P can execute wait s is if is if the state it has a P1 and P is selected to execute. Do you, so do you see that it's the, it's the start state where P can execute wait s. That's one place they can wait, execute wait s. And the other place they can execute wait s is in the state P1, Q2, where, where it goes from that, that one to the one to the right. Are you with me on that? Those are the, those are the two places where, um, those are the two places where P can, can execute wait s and going from the state P1, Q1, one empty, to the state P2, Q1, zero empty, and from the state P1, Q2, uh, zero empty, to the state P2 prime, Q2, with the state zero with when P is blocked. Those are the two places where P can execute weight S. Now, here is, now, okay, now here comes something that's really tricky. And our author does not explain it this way, but I found that in order to understand the logic of, of reasoning with semaphores, we have to understand what, what, what we mean by complete execution of weight S. Now look, and here's the point. When weight S causes a process to block, the weight statement has not been completely executed because, here look, When this Q2, when this, how did, why is there a Q2 prime here? Because what did Q execute here? It executed what statement? Which statement did it execute when it, when it, go, when it went from here to here? What is the statement Q1? It's wait. So Q1 executed that wait statement to get to here. Are you with me? But now look. It executed that wait statement to get to here. And that, but now then, but, but then what happened? Q2 is, is blocked here. So then what happened is P went to here. Are you with me? And now what's, now what's going to happen is at this point, Q can execute and going from here to here. But the thing of it is, is that at this point right here, the wait statement has not finished executing. So what happens is when P exit now what statement did P execute? It, it executed a signal. So when it executed a signal, when P executed the signal, that's when this wait statement finally finished its execution. The wait S statement completes its execution when it is unblocked. So the wait statement hasn't executed yet. It has not finished execute. It, it only finishes execution here. Are you with me? Does everybody see what I'm trying to get at here? The wait, see, look. Here's, here's, here's an example with another transition. Look, um, here's, here's what, how we're going to illustrate complete execution of weight S. Suppose, suppose P, now how did P get from this bottom state to the bottom right state? What statement did it execute? It executed well, no. This P1. is P1, right? Yeah. Okay. So it executed P1 to get to this state. Are you with me? And now what's, but now in this state, what do we have? P2 what? Prime. So now what happens is, <laughs> so, but now here's the thing. Um, when Q, so from this state, from this state, only Q can execute. So when Q, execu so when Q goes from here up to here, that's when P, that's when the wait statement has finally, has finally been executed. 
the point I'm trying to make is that in this state, in this state, the lower right hand corner, wait has not executed yet. It has not finished executing yet. It's in the process of being executed. But it hasn't finished executed until this process is unblocked. That's going to be important in dealing in, in reasoning with semaphores. You'll see that, actually we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do some reasoning, we're going to prove some theorems and stuff with these semaphores. And one of the, one of the things that we're going to look at is, well, this number represents how many wait statements have executed. But you've got to realize that when the process is blocked, the wait statement has not finished executing yet. So when we count how many times the wait has executed, we're going to have to remember that. Okay, so anyway, that seems like a mountain out of a molehill, but you'll see why that's important in the near future. Okay, so now one more thing. The strength of a semaphore. And this is important in Java. In Java, you can specify whether a semaphore is how the strength of a semaphore. So here's what we mean by a strong semaphore. A strong semaphore uses a queue. Now what does FIFO mean? First in, first out. A strong semaphore uses a queue, FIFO, of blocked processes. The process unblocked, the one, the process unblocked is the one in the queue for the longest time. Now you would think, well why aren't they all like that? But in practice they're not. Okay. Because there might be some other scheduling characteristics that you want that the, that you, that you want the system to have. Okay. Now, a weak semaphore uses a set of block processes and the process unblocked is unpredictable. And the thing of it is, is that the semaphore policy is distinct from the scheduling policy in the ready queue. Okay. So which one gets picked is, depends on the scheduling. Okay. And it's not necessarily first in, first out. You just, we just have to be aware that, that there is that possibility. All right, so we'll end with a demo. I think this C minus minus demo was going to be an easy one. Okay, before we do the demo, let's take a look at, the, um, at some C++ code. First thing to notice is that C++ provides a binary semaphore called mutex. So it does not actually have a counting semaphore as described in our text, but the primitive uh, semaphore that it provides is, is called mutex, and it's a binary semaphore. Um, and furthermore, instead of the terminology wait s, um, if s is the semaphore declared in C++, then the method is lock. So s.lock corresponds to our wait s, and s.unlock corresponds to our signal s. Now before we actually look at the demo, let's take a look at some code. So here is the declaration of the, mu of the mutex. It's a simple built-in uh, uh, class called mutex, and here we have just declared s to be our little local mu mutex variable, and our u we have our usual volatile int n initialized to zero. And so here's the code for the process p. So we have void p run, and we have our usual temp in our for loop that get, runs 10 times. We have some, a random delay of 20 here, and with some um, C out statements to stream the uh, value of i. And here again, the pre protocol is s.lock, and then our critical section is temp gets in, and then we try to force some random delay in between temp gets in and n gets temp plus 1. And our post protocol is s.unlock. So wait is lock, signal is unlock in C++. And here's the identical uh, code for Q. It obviously uses the same semaphore, s.lock for the pre-protocol and s.unlock for the post-protocol. And here is the um, main program, which is, there's this, all, this is the same as, as the main programs we had before with C++. Now, C++ does not have a counting semaphore class. But if you ever want to use one, if you ever need one in C++, it's pretty straightforward to build one using the techniques, the monitor techniques in the next chapter, in Chapter 7. So I have done that and put the code in the util folder. So we will actually do two demos, one with the uh, mutex and one with this uh, counting semaphore 
that is uh, supplied in the utilities folder for this course. You see it is implemented in util450.cpp and I have named the uh, class Semaphore, capital S Semaphore, with a constructor that initializes the S variable to any integer that you want. And for a binary semaphore, we would, we would initialize it to 1. And we have the usual volatile int and get 0. And the rest of the code is very straightforward. It's the same that we had before, only instead of using S dot, instead of using S dot lock, we use S dot wait. And instead of using S dot unlock, we use S dot signal as with the terminology in our textbook. And here the code for uh, Q is the same, and the main program is the same. So let's get on with the demo. OK, so here's our demo. We have here algorithm 6.1.cpp. And here's the code that we looked at in the slides. Notice that we have here mutex S, S which is the built-in uh, binary semaphore that C++ provides. And we reviewed this code in the uh, on the slides, so there's no need to see that now. So let's just go ahead and run it. So here we go. Not too exciting because, boom, the value of n is 20, just as we would suspect. And notice that the uh, delays are qu quite interesting. We don't just switch back and forth between p and q, but q does 2 here, and then 3, and then p starts with 1, and then q does 4 and 5, and then p does 2, and then q does, it looks like q is kind of ahead of, ahead of it's kind of ahead in the race. But anyway, no matter how many times we do this, of course, the value is still going to be 20, because we have solved the, we'll do it one more time, because we have, oh look, we got a little interleaving that time in the um, output statements. The reason that happens is because the output statements are not in the critical section you see they are they are here outside the uh, the uh, critical section so of course interleaving can happen in the uh, output statements and here let's take a look at uh, 6.1b so here's the code for 6.1b notice here that um, we have our usual int uh, n is 0 and th this is the name of the semaphore that I uh, have provided in the util uh, uh, directory and uh, here the it's initialized to one as it would be for a binary semaphore. So let's take a look at uh, six algorithm six dash one b, which is this counting semaphore in C plus plus six one b. And if we run it, of course, we're going to get the same res same kind of results. So they will look indistinguishable. Actually, here it's twenty. We'll do it again. It's 20 again. We didn't get any we did not get any interleaving that time in the output statements. But now here's an interesting experiment. Check this out. Now what do you suppose? See, we have the ability to initialize our count, and of course for a binary semaphore we initialize it to one in order for this to work correctly. Now what do you suppose would happen if we initialize this to zero? Can you think what would happen? So here let's let's change this one to zero for our initializing uh, the value of s. Can you predict what will happen? Well, what's going to happen is the, w both of these processes are going to start off and because the semaphore is 0, when they execute their wait statement, they will both be blocked and we will have a deadlock. So let's try it. That's, our, that's my prediction anyway. Boop! Q started first, then P started, and they were both blocked. And see, look, the process is still running. We need, we need to enter, intervene from the outside world here to get them to stop. I wonder if we do this again, if Q will always start first. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, Q started first that time, too. And here's another here's another uh, problem. I wonder if, we, if you can predict um, what would happen if we... Um, so let's stop that process. Now what do you suppose would happen if we initialize this instead of initializing it to 0 or 1? Suppose we initialize it to 2. Can you predict what will happen? Well, think about it. What will happen is P, if P tries to get in first, it will get in and it will decrease the count to 1. But then if Q tries to get in, the count will just be 1 and the Q can get in 2. 
So what will happen if it's initialized to 2 is we will have interleaving in the critical section and the value of n will be unpredictable but, we, will, but will be a value that's less than 20. So let's try this and see if our prediction is correct. Oop, and sure enough, you see, they both got into their critical section because the semaphore was initialized to 2. So this time it was 16. If we run it again, this time it's 13. And again, like it's unpredictable because we have that interleaving that, that we have um, explored in great detail before. All right, so that's the end of the demo. Yeah, no starvation, everything. So look how easy that is with semaphores. But you got to have that you know, you have to have this, whatever system you're dealing with, you got to have, if you have semaphores, that's, that's the solution to the problem. Okay, so that's the end of our demo. And we'll, what we'll look at next time is we'll see how to do this in Java. All right, good deal. See you next time.